Hello there, this is Robin Norgren and I'm your host for Montessori Creativity and the Meaning of Life. We are in the middle of a series called Love Poems from God, 12 Sacred Voices from the East and the West, celebrating um, poetry and poems in particular that um, focus on the theme of love transmitted through their uh, written word. So today uh, we are going to focus on St. Thomas Aquinas. I'm going to start with a couple of his quotes. The first one is, because of my compassion, the sun wanted to be near me all night and the earth deeded her fields to me. And all in heaven said, we have voted you our governor. Tell us your divine mandate. And I did, and God will never revoke it. Nothing in existence is turned away. So here's a little background on St. Thomas Aquinas. Thomas Aquinas, 1225 to 1274, is highly regarded as the greatest Catholic theologian. One could say he was a spiritual master, always striving to reveal to others the path to Christ. It is said that toward the end of his life, he asked Jesus to pass judgment upon one of his books, and Jesus replied, You have written well. Continue to write whatever your heart wishes to express. Thomas was born in Aquino, Italy, near Naples, into a noble family. And at the age of five, he was sent to the Benedictine Abbey of Monte Cassino to receive his basic education in the hope that he would someday become an influential abbot. At an early age, he began to develop a great and lasting love of the scriptures, especially the Psalms. And at times he revealed what was to become his hallmark by stunning his teachers with profound questions and insights about God. Here he also developed a great love for meditation and solitude, which he, better descri- which he later described as the greatest opportunity offered to a human being, a life of contemplation of the wonders of creation and God. At the age of 17, he became a Dominican novice in the Menikent Order. And this order, which was considered countercultural, had been started by a contemporary of St. Francis of Assisi and was based on the principles of poverty, preaching, and complete faith in God. Not long after this, Thomas's brothers, at the direction of their mother, kidnapped him and imprisoned him for nearly two years within the family castle to force him to disavow his radical, medicant way of life. Refusing various temptations offered to him, he spent his time memorizing the scriptures. Finally, his family relented and allowed him to return to the Dominicans. After further studies in Naples, he was appointed as a master at the University of Paris in 1257. During that time, he came to embrace the long-supported Aristotelian texts on metaphysics. These texts helped develop him in him the ability to present the profound in simple terms, while also creating in Thomas Thomas a reverence, an almost scientific approach to every moment of time and every creature and form in existence. His experience became that all in creation was revelations of God's infinite, eternal, expanding being. Over the next 16 years, he composed nearly 100 truly remarkable works. This prolific output, output in all is all the more remarkable in light of the numerous stories of Thomas Aquinas often being absorbed in states of enchantment and being completely unconscious of his surroundings or his actions, even to the point of putting inedible items into his mouth at the dining table. Near the end of his life, he had a revelation, a divine revelation, while celebrating Mass in the chapel of St. Nicholas in Naples, that caused him to state, I can no longer write, for God has given me such glorious knowledge that all contained in my works are as straw, barely fit to absorb the holy wonders that fall in a stable. Three months later, he died. Here is one of his poems. It's called On Behalf of Love. 
every truth without exception, no matter who makes it, is from God. If a bird got accused of singing too early in the morning, if a lute began to magically play on its own in the square, and the enchanting sounds it made drove a pair of young lovers into a wild public display of passion, if this lute and bird then got called before the Inquisition and their lives were literally at stake, could not God walk up and say before the court, all acts of beauty are mine, all happen on behalf of love. And while God was there testifying for our heart's desires, hopefully the judge would be astute enough to brave a question that could go, Dear God, you say all acts of beauty are yours. Surely we can believe that. But what of all the actions we see in this world? For th is there any force in existence greater than the power of your omnipresent hand? And God might have responded, I like that question, adding, may I ask you one as well? And then God would say, have you ever been in a conversation where children entered the room and you then ceased speaking because your wisdom knew they were not old enough to benefit, to understand? As exquisite as is your world, most everyone in it is spiritually young. Spirituality is love, and love never wars with the minute, the day, oneself, and others. Love would rather die than maim a limb, a wing. Dear, anything that divides man from man, earth from sky, light and dark, one religion from another, oh, I best keep silent. I see a child just entered the room. Thanks so much for stopping by. Make sure and like and share and subscribe. And um, just truly hope you are enjoying this series.